Uh, in case uh, you will not hear well, please just uh, shut at us and we will try to improve our voice. And thank you for, uh, for introduction. And okay, let's, uh, let's proceed. Uh, at first, uh, let's talk a little bit about the timeline, about the presentation timeline. Uh, we want to talk about Kubernetes and DevOps and GitOps, how we are using it. So we will briefly introduce GitOps pattern, talk a little bit about platform that we use and why we choose that. Because we use uh, cluster fleet in our test case or in our scenarios, we have to have some kind of uh, management for the clusters. So we will talk a little bit about uh, cluster management, uh, especially about advanced cluster management. Then we will move a little bit to more, let's say, GitOps and DevOps part. So we will describe Argo CD, Tekton, and monitoring part. Then we will switch to Argo workflows and Argo events, which are great tools that uh, we really enjoy to use. We also prepared a few demos, so this is something you will enjoy as well. And uh, we also didn't uh, forget to some visualization of data that we are collecting during, uh, during our let's say, testing. And then just small wrap up. So that was a small introduction and I will hand over to David. Okay, hello again. Uh, so let's start with the description what we what we test, how we use it, and we start with the GitOps pattern. Uh, what is a GitOps pattern? Pattern it's it's a pattern for uh, it's it's more or less a set of practices to where we where you use the Git as a source of truth for your all configuration, uh, declarative infrastructure, and application manifests, and so on. Uh, there are many principles, so for example, you can store the declarative configuration in a Git repository. You can use a version control from the Git, so you are always, uh, you always know uh, which version of your uh, the configuration is running on top of your clusters or fleet of clusters, or what kind of configuration of your application is deployed. Uh, also, there are many tools for deployment, for automated deployment, and some few benefits f from my point of view, the best is a collaboration because uh, the GitOps pattern allows the DevOps, QE, and developers work on the same Git repository and they con can control the deployment and configuration. Uh, the platform which we use is a Kubernetes. We use the OpenShift implementation of the Kubernetes. Why? Because we uh, we test and deploy the application which are supposed to run on top of the Kubernetes. Uh, we use the Kubernetes also for hosting the infra and all the automation stuff and running the operators of application which we test or run. And Ansible, because we don't like the shell scripting, so we use Ansible for our automation and deployment of the uh, infrastructure part of the whole ecosystem. Let's move to the first interesting tool, which is the cluster management. We use the advanced cluster management, which is based on open, open source project, open cluster management. It allows us to manage clusters, create, deploy, uh, create and delete using the Hive, control the upgrades of all your fleet of clusters, and also it allows you to deploy and enforce the policies like, for example, the policies for limitation of the cluster, uh, count of cluster admins on your clusters and so on. And also, the, the key benefit for us is that it provides a central monitoring solution and logging. There is a screenshot from the UI of the cluster management. You can see that the local cluster is the infrastructure cluster, and it's a hub cluster, which controls the rest of the clusters where we run the applications under test and, and other operators. And there is a, just another screen with the policy which is deployed over the old clusters and it requires the cluster admin account. Another tool, tools, are Argo CD, which is the tool for the synchronization and deployment or your YAML manifests stored in the Git repositories. Uh, we love the 
Argo CD operator because it allows us to control the all application application set and also the Argo set server uh, using the uh, custom resources. So it can be also uh, stores in the Git repository. So we don't need to manually click it in the Argo CD uh, UI. Uh, it also al al also shows uh, some metrics and alerts, and the main benefit is support the customize. Uh, yeah. The another tool for the running the automation, of in our case, the CI pipelines, is a Tecton. It's a native uh, cloud native CI CD system. Uh, it contains uh, pipelines, tasks, and triggers, uh, which are also the custom resources controlled by the Tecton operator. So we can store every pipeline and task which, are, can, which can be shared across the pipelines as a custom resources in Git repository. As I said, it's a cloud native, so it run, so the all pi whole pipeline is uh, running inside the Kubernetes cluster as a pod. The pod can be multi-container, so every step can be uh, can be split uh, into the into these containers. So, simple example is that your pipeline needs to clone the repository and run, for example, the Maven build. So, the first step use the minimal Git container, and the second use the more heavy container for the Maven build, for example. So you can you you don't need to build the Ibra, uh, Ibra uh, container with all the tools you need for running your pipelines. And that's monitoring. Okay, so at first, let me a little bit explain why we actually started with this. We wanted to simulate the customer environment and run our projects and products like in customer way to catch the issues that potential customers or customers could uh, hit. For example, we, we, uh, we are working on a Streamsy operator, and we would like to know if the operator and Kafka itself is able to run, for example, 10 weeks or months. So that's why we started with solution that we are trying to uh, describe to. The, one of the biggest part that we kind of had to implement is monitoring part because when we are running something for quite a long time, we definitely need to know what is going on in the cluster, why the services or pods or projects that are running on top of it are working or not, and how it behaves during some specific situations. We also need to get this information from uh, previous time. So in case we, we hit some issue, we definitely need to understand what was happening before. For that, we use several tools. We use cluster monitoring, which is part of uh, advanced cluster management. And this solution basically provides uh, a solution that uh, connects all the Prometheus instances that are available on our clusters into one central point where Thanos is running. And uh, it collects all the metrics and stores them, in our case, on AWS in S3 bucket. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, Prometheus on every, every cluster. This is by default installed, and uh, it's pointed to the, to the central hub. This central hub also hosts Grafana instance, where we can very easily check the, uh, the metrics that are collected and resolve them in, uh, in Grafana dashboards. Uh, only data source that we are using is uh, from Thanos, so we don't care about uh, the data sources from each of the cluster, but we use only central point, which is quite good for us, and we are able to get metrics, let's say, for last 10 days, 30 days. It's basically up to you how you configure your uh, Thanos instance. Another important part is logging. Again, when we have something that is running for quite a long time, we have to understand from the logs what's going on, how, how the reconciliations, for example, are uh, running, what was wrong during a specific situations. So we need the logs. For that, we use OpenShift cluster logging that basically do very similar thing as, uh, as the previous part with monitoring. Uh, OpenShift cluster logging basically deploys vector collectors that are running as a 
daemon sets on every node of our Kubernetes cluster and collect all the logs from each pod that is running on the cluster. These data are then sent to a Loki stack, which is basically store, which is uh, very similar, for, it's, it's inspired by Prometheus, and it offers to you store the data, store all your logs in uh, S3 buckets or in, in Kafka, for example. Again, you can define a different, uh, different data retention, so if you want to keep uh, logs for certain applications for one year, you can very easily do that. And on the other hand, you can basically drop logs from some, let's say, useless testing uh, applications that you don't want to keep for longer time. You can drop the logs, for example, after 10 days. Also, Loki has a native uh, uh, integration with Grafana, Prometheus, and Kubernetes. It's basically a uh, Kubernetes native uh, uh, solution. Okay, here is uh, Argo workflows. It's something a little bit different, but it's from, uh, from Argo family products. Argo workflows is very similar to Tekton. You can run a specific, uh, specific workflows, or you can, you can call it pipelines, and these pipelines are doing uh, whatever you want. You can run shell script, you can run something in Python, for example, for some data science or ML. It's up to you. It provides Kubernetes native experience, so everything is handled and uh, defined in custom resource. Each, uh, each workflow step could be a different container, so it's very similar to Tekton. And again, you can, uh, you can define there a different specification for each container. So if you have one container that do just a small piece of work and then you need more resources for another stuff, you can easily uh, configure it and you can also easily um, provide results from one container to another. Argo workflows are triggered by uh, two ways. You can uh, use current expression, but uh, the main part is you can use events. Uh, events are used through Argo events, so I will talk about it uh, in the uh, next slide. And Let's talk a little bit, little bit about uh, what uh, the workflows offers. You can use uh, templating, you can use uh, conditions for uh, specific parts of your scripts or workflows. You can use exit handlers, which is great in case uh, your workflow fails and you want to have a notification on Slack or create Jira for you. It's very, very powerful. And use cases, yeah, for example, CI CD, infra automation, or machine learning. Argo events, on the other hand, is uh, event driven automation framework. Basically, it uh, collects events from uh, specific sources, push it into internal event, uh, event bus, and then um, the sources are connected to event bus and react on the events that are received from uh, out of the world, and you can, based on that, trigger Argo workflows or other stuff. Uh, again, it's a Kubernetes nat native tool, so everything is handled or defined in uh, custom resources. So at first, uh, you define event bus that basically uh, is used uh, as a transport layer for events and its core of the Argo events. Then there are event sources. Event sources used for uh, uh, collecting events from outside. So for example, from Git, from pub subsystem for Slack or from Webhook. It's basically up to you. You can even define your own, uh, your own event source, so it's very powerful. And then there are sensors that are subscribed to the event bus and react on the events that uh, arrive to the event bus. Um, in our implementation, as an event bus, we use uh, Kafka, which is managed by Streamzy. Uh, Streamzy is a collection of uh, Kubernetes operators that manage uh, Kafka and uh, other project uh, components like uh, Kafka Topics, Kafka Users, Kafka Bridge, Kafka Connect, etc. Here is our uh, architecture for configuration of Argo events and Argo workflows. So again, you can see um, on, the, on the left side that uh, there are event sources 
it's just an example of uh, Webhook, GitHub, Slack, but uh, as I mentioned, you can use whatever you want. Uh, the events from there are sent to Argo events, especially to event source, and event source itself is connected to Kafka, where, uh, where the events are stored. Then, as I mentioned, sensor is uh, attached to Kafka, listening to a specific event, and when the event arrives, it will trigger Argo workflow based on the specific conditions that you specify in the sensor. So if you want, uh, for example, React only on uh, release events from GitHub, you can very easily uh, implement it as a condition in, in the sensor. Here is a screenshot from, uh, from our deployment. So uh, on the uh, on left side, you can see uh, deployment of Streamzy cluster operator together with Streamzy drain cleaner. And below it is uh, our, uh, our event bus, which is basically Kafka craft cluster with some additional tool like entity operator, cruise control for automated rebal rebalancing, and Kafka exporter for more metrics. And on, uh, on the right side, there is the whole deployment of Argo events and Argo workflows with some event sources and also with some already completed workflows. You can see, for example, uh, Automation Hub, if it's uh, correctly visible here, that uh, takes about uh, all, all the installation on our clusters. So let's move to the overall architecture. And we will start on a green field. So on the beginning, we have the one repository, which is the Automation Hub. It contains all the Ansible playbooks and manifests for the Argo CD application application sets and other, other, other configuration. The second repository is a Deployment Hub. It contains all the manifest, the YAML manifest for the application like a StreamZ and the Bezium and, and so on. And let's start the end. We also need the infrastructure cluster. So this is this is the cluster which will be in future the hub cluster for the whole fleet. So in the beginning, someone needs to trigger the automation hub uh, Ansible on his own laptop or or other other other, other PC, uh, and it starts to deploy the old stuff on the infrastructure cluster. It installs Argo CD, Tecton, Argo workflow, and ACM monitoring and logging operators. Then, ACM steps in and starts to spawn the clusters, uh, the worker clusters. So it creates the worker cluster one and worker cluster two. Then, Argo CD, because it's deployed and the all application sets are created, start to sync uh, 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 YAML files from the deployment hub. So, it creates and deploy all the managed apps on the first server and the second server. We also have the, another repository, which is the Streams repository, upstream repository, and Kwai. Uh, the Streams repository contains all the new version of the manifest and images uh, of the Streams, Streams Kafka operator. And we have automation for get these changes and deploy uh, and write back into our deployment hub. So update the YAML manifest in deployment hub. So, the Tecton checks the state of the repository and Kwai and push the changes into the deployment hub. And in this case, Argo CD gets the changes and update the applications on the worker cluster one and worker cluster two. Tecton also, uh, in our Tecton, we also have some pipelines for upgrading the clusters and other stuff. Now, the Argo workflow steps in and it gets the latest changes and periodically we'll get the latest changes using the Argo events uh, in from our automation hub. So we don't need to run the Ansible playbooks for the updating infrastructure on our laptop, but the Argo workflows will take care about it. So the Argo will manage the work cluster, work cluster two and cluster itself. That was the architecture of the greenfield uh, on the greenfield when we start and let's move to the uh, short demo how the argo workflows looks when the new commit uh, is uh, merged into the uh, automation hub repository 
So, yeah, there is a there is a GitHub pull request with the simple change. It just changed the replica of the ACM on the worker clusters. So let's move and merge it. Now we will move to the console, the UI of the Argo workflows. You can see there are some previous runs of the pipelines. And we are waiting for the, for the trigger and for the new pipeline, which will be triggered soon, I hope. So let's wait. Ah, pipeline is triggered. Uh, yeah, we can check the logs and other stuff if we open it. Now we are waiting for the pod creation and trigger the Ansible inside. And it, okay. So I will be a little bit faster. So yeah, pipeline is triggered. Uh, it's running Ansible, right? And on the end, Ansible is success. So it updates all the operators on the on the infrastructure cluster. And you can see that the notify step is skipped because we are interested only on uh, notification when the pipeline is failed. So this was first part. The second small short demo is about how it looks at uh, Tecton pipelines. So this is the UI in OpenShift console uh, with the R pipelines. If I open the streams deployment image update, which is the pipeline I talked about, about updating the YAML manifest and images of the streams Kafka operator, you can see that this is a YAML definition, the YAML manifest, uh, split into the steps. The first step used only Alpine Git, which is the minimal image for running your, uh, your Git commands. And the second one is our image with some tools which we need for running the Ansible properly. Uh, if I open the pipeline run, I can open it, see uh, that the pipeline was success, all the tasks were successful, and uh, the uh, notifying for, us to, uh, for the Slack notify Slack was also skipped because the pipeline was successful. Another example is the pipeline our test suite, which uh, failed. So the YAML definition is same, pipeline run seems failed. Uh, yeah, the step failed on the Maven, so we run the JUnit 5 tests and, uh, and the end of the pipeline was failed because the test failed. And we can see on the end that the notify Slack was triggered and we received the message on the Slack. And the last demo is about how it looks, the Argo CD, when I change some stuff in the deployment hub and how Argo proceed these changes into the, into the worker clusters. This is the UI of the, of the Argo CD server. You can see the many applications which we, we are deployed. Uh, we can filter out the application, so we filter the application with label Strimzy and we are also interested only on work cluster one, so we can switch. We can see the, the filtered applications. We will open the application. In there, you can see all the uh, resources deployed by, by this application. You can see also how the pods are spread across the uh, cluster nodes. And we can also open the pods and check them, yeah. You can see the pause, you can also open the logs I will show you a little bit later. So again, I have the PR, the pull request changed the, our testing IoT messages. I changed the battery level from 99 to 50. Jakub approves it, so I can squash and merge it. So let's merge it. And move back to the Argo CD. Uh, we can uh, refresh the page. And we will see that application is out of sync. Uh, so the Argo is starting to roll out the changes on our cluster. So the pods with the IoT uh, clients uh, are rolled out. Uh, so we are waiting for, for all pods ready. Pods are recreated. And if I open the pods and open the log of 
any pot. I can see that the message was changed from 99 to 50. So the battery level is a 50, okay. And also I can open, as I said before, I can open the, the history and I can see which changes are deployed currently in this project. And this is my, my changes, yeah. So that was it, um, Grafana results. Yeah, so a few words about, uh, about Grafana results. Uh, we have several Grafana dashboards that are tied to, to our software under test, which is uh, Streamzy. Uh, this uh, dashboard is uh, for Streamzy operators. You can see we can filter out which cluster uh, we are looking at because we have Streamzy installed on uh, several clusters, so we can very easily filter out which we want to see and check, uh, check the data. Uh, next one, here is a uh, dashboard for Kafka itself. Uh, we use uh, the dashboards from StreamZ project, so we uh, try to use always the newest one and uh, check that everything in uh, our main branch is working fine, so it won't uh, affect, uh, any potential bug won't affect uh, our users or customers. Here is a uh, Loki dashboard, you can easily filter there uh, a specific uh, application in a specific namespace, and you can also search for a specific uh, text in the logs. So if you want to just filter out only, only log uh, level on info level, you can very easily do that. Or if you are looking for a specific keyword, for example, it will do that for you as well. Here is our custom dashboard just for monitoring uh, the infrastructure, so you can see it was everything fine <laughs> when, when we created, uh, uh, created uh, the screenshot and there are some, uh, some information about software under test which is streams as I mentioned. Okay, uh, summary. So we wanted to highlight that there is a lot of uh, Kubernetes native tools that are mostly part of the CNCF that can very help you with, uh, with your Kubernetes m management, with monitoring, with deployment and can do a lot of stuff instead of just uh, do a, a very, uh, very long and uh, not much human readable shell scripts, for example, but you can use uh, real Kubernetes native experience. Uh, I'd like to also highlight that uh, thanks to this, we are able to do uh, zero touch upgrade, not just uh, of the clusters itself, but also about uh, all of our operators that we are using as uh, uh, for example, for monitoring, but also over Streamzy as a software under test. Uh, we use Grafana for uh, metrics. We have just one single instance where everything is uh, shown to one place, so you don't uh, need to have a different Grafana instance just uh, for each cluster. But uh, yeah, there is a central, uh, central monitoring point that uh, really helps you with uh, getting data like uh, monitoring metrics and uh, logs. And also we didn't mention that we have uh, Alert Manager installed next to the Prometheus, so in case there is something uh, happening, we get the notification from Alert Manager on Slack. Yeah, and uh, that's it, there are some links. Uh, uh, everything we use is available on GitHub. We have uh, all the examples and uh, Automation Hub and Develop, uh, dev Development Hub? Deployment, Deployment Hub. hub uh, publicly available, so you can check how we configure stuff, and yeah, play with it, reuse it, up to you. Okay, thank you, and now it's time for questions. Yeah? Yeah, so the question was, uh, at first when we starting, we have uh, infrastructure available where we execute our Ansible playbook. 
and if uh, there is some automation that will provide us uh, the infrastructure, correct? Yes, we have uh, a Jenkins job that basically do stuff for us, uh, creating the cluster, but this is, uh, this could very differ from different uh, users. You can definitely use Hive for that as well. Uh, we basically wanted to highlight that uh, this is our prerequisite to have infrastructure available. Then we, from our local machine, just once execute the Ansible playbook and then everything is done out in an autonomous way. So in case we want to have worker clusters or more worker clusters, just scale it. Everything is done by the Ansible and the tooling that we described. So preparing the infra sorry, infra cluster is uh, basically up to you and uh, we don't have any specific, uh, any, uh, any specific automation for that. Okay, thank you everyone.